What are some of the signs of the second coming of Christ and of the end of the world? The Bible tells us of some spectacular natural events that would take place, which would signify that the second coming is near. So should we look for these signs to be seen soon, or have they already been seen? The truth may surprise you. The prophet Joel had declared that as the end of the world nears, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Many people read this passage and they look for signs of a blood moon to signify the fulfillment of prophecy. But did you know that this is just one of three signs that were to be seen? We are told of these three signs in the sixth seal, which is found in Revelation chapter 6. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So before Jesus returns, these three signs were to be seen. A great earthquake, the darkening of the sun and the blood moon, and the falling of the stars. But when were these signs to be seen? There have been many earthquakes and many blood moons in history. How could we distinguish these signs and recognize them as fulfillments of prophecy? Well, Jesus told us when these signs would come. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. These were to be unmistakable signs to the people living in the last days that the second coming of Christ is near. And Jesus told us when these signs would come, at the end of the tribulation. Now the tribulation is that great time of persecution that Christians were to go through at the hands of the Antichrist. So we need to know who the Antichrist is and when the tribulation was to come. And the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation give us the answers to these questions. If you haven't seen it already, check out my video Antichrist Revealed in the description below where I talk about these issues. But in summary, the Antichrist is that great religious power which arose after the fall of the Roman Empire. It is the Roman Catholic Church which fulfilled all the prophecies of the Antichrist. It reigned over the kings of the earth. It attempted to change the very law of God and it persecuted Bible-believing Christians throughout the Dark Ages. This was the Tribulation and the Bible told us exactly how long it would last. It would be for 1260 years. And this is another prophecy which was remarkably fulfilled by the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Church attained civil power to persecute dissenters from Emperor Justinian in the year 538, and it lasted for exactly 1260 years until the Papal States were abolished in 1798. And it is at the end of this 1260 year period that the signs of the Sixth Seal were to be seen, sometime around the year 1798. The Christians at the time knew that the tribulation was coming to an end, and they were anticipating the soon appearance of these signs, which were to signal the downfall of the Roman Church and the end of the world. So were these signs seen sometime around the year 1798? Yes, and as we will see, they were recognized as fulfillments of biblical prophecy when they happened. So let's take a look. The first sign was to be an earthquake, and it came right on time, near the close of the 1260 year tribulation, when persecution had almost wholly ceased. On the 1st of November 1755, Lisbon, the capital of Portugal, was rocked by one of the deadliest earthquakes in history. The earthquake almost completely destroyed Lisbon, which at the time was one of the wealthiest cities in the world, and it had to be rebuilt almost from scratch. The effects of this earthquake were greater than that of any other earthquake in history. It affected an area exceeding 4 million square miles, 
being felt as far away as Greenland, the West Indies, Ireland and Sweden, leading one commentator to say that it greatly surpassed anything of the kind ever recorded in history. The death toll is estimated to have been up to 100,000. But the impact of the earthquake transcended the physical damage that it caused. The effect of the earthquake was so profound that it gave rise to modern seismology, and it was also seen as a divine judgment on the Antichrist system of Rome, which also signaled its soon demise. Portugal was one of the countries that had not opened its doors to the Protestant Reformation, which was a call to turn back from apostasy and back to biblical Christianity and Lisbon was a major centre of Roman Catholicism, being home to the headquarters of the Portuguese Inquisition. And the earthquake came on All Saints' Day, a notable Roman Catholic holiday. And in the aftermath of this devastating earthquake, the remaining two signs were anticipated to come soon. Edmund March, writing in 1762, If we could find the signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, particularly the sun darkened, the moon withholding her light, and the stars of heaven fallen, we should be ready perhaps to think the coming of the Son of Man just at hand. It should be emphasized that those who were studying the prophecies knew where they were in the prophetic timeline, and they expected these signs to come soon, and their expectations were met. The next sign was to be the darkening of the sun and the appearance of a blood moon and it came only a few years later, in what came to be known as the Dark Day of 1780. On the 19th of May 1780, before 11 o'clock in the morning, a mysterious darkness started to spread over the northeastern part of the United States and over parts of Canada, until the sun was completely blocked. U.S. states such as Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island and Vermont were in total darkness. It was reported to be so dark that a piece of paper could not be seen at reading distance. People needed to carry candles and torches in the middle of the day in order to see anything. It was just as the prophecy had foretold. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the darkness lasted for the entire day and did not clear until early the next morning. And the cause of this darkness is still a mystery to this day. There was no eclipse, and there is no record of there being any smoke from fire which could have caused this darkness. As one writer observed, almost if not altogether alone, as the most mysterious and as yet unexplained phenomenon of its kind, stands the dark day of May 19, 1780, the most unaccountable darkening of the whole visible heavens and atmosphere in New England. No such darkness has ever been recorded since that time, and in fact the only previous instances of such darkness were of supernatural origin. One instance was the three hours of darkness when Jesus was crucified, and the other instance was the ninth plague which befell Egypt in the time of Moses, when the sun was darkened for a full three days. So the prophecy said that the sun would be darkened, and this was widely recorded. But the prophecy also said that the moon would become as blood. And right in line with this prophecy, eyewitness testimony confirms that after the dark day came to an end, a blood-red moon was seen early the next morning. So the sun was turned to darkness and the moon to blood, just as the prophecy had foretold. And in the aftermath of the dark day of 1780, the final sign, the falling of the stars, was also anticipated to come soon. The Herald of Gospel Liberty published in the year 1808. In the year 1780, the sun was darkened to the astonishment of thousands. Christ mentioned signs in the stars, but whether there has been any particular signs in the stars, I am not able to determine. But while there are so many other signs, we may expect them soon. As with the previous signs, the falling of the stars is an event which was expected to take place soon, and it finally came on the 13th of November 1833, the greatest star shower the world had ever seen. The dark day of 1780 saw the day turned into darkness, and now in 1833, 
the night was lit up in a spectacular star shower. As one onlooker said, it seemed as if the whole starry heavens had congregated at one point near the zenith and were simultaneously shooting forth with the velocity of lightning to every part of the horizon. And yet they were not exhausted. Thousands swiftly followed in the track of thousands, as if created for the occasion. This was a dazzling display. It generated a renewed interest in astronomy, and it had a powerful effect on the Christian world at the time, as they recognized it to be the third sign of the sixth seal, which pointed to the soon coming of Christ. So the first three signs of the sixth seal were fulfilled, and they were given to the Christian world to let them know where they were in the prophetic timeline, and to let them know that the second coming of Christ was near. As one author put it, Christ's prophecy at this point was not giving a description of events at the very end of the world, but signs by which it might be known when the end was drawing near. The signs came at exactly the right time, at the end of the 1260 year tribulation, which ended in 1798, and they came in exactly the same order as predicted in prophecy. They came with such intensity, and had such a great effect on society, and they were recognized to be the fulfillments of prophecy. And the appearance of these signs was no surprise to the viewers. Those who were studying the prophecies were expecting these signs to come soon, and to them were the signs given, to know the hour in which they were living, and to reignite interest in Bible prophecy. This is why each of the signs appeared in North America and Europe. This is where the Protestant world was located. They were the ones studying the prophecies, and to them was given to understand the meaning of these signs. So as we have seen, each of the first three signs of the sixth seal were fulfilled. The great Lisbon earthquake of 1755, the great dark day of 1780, and the spectacular falling of the stars in 1833. These were God's warning markers to alert us that the end of all things is near. And the sixth seal ends with another earthquake, the greatest earthquake in history, which will happen when Jesus returns the second time. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island will move out of their places. This will happen after the soon coming tribulation, which will last for a short time, and which will be the greatest time of trouble the world has ever seen. Check out my other videos dealing with these issues, I'll leave them linked up on the screen. Let me know your comments below, like, share and subscribe if you like my content, don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.